Hello everyone and welcome to the Necrons Masterclass by Contact Lost with Gito, our special guest. Hello Gito again. Hello everyone again. So uh, what this is basically is additional content that is, has early access for our Patreons and YouTube members. Uh, here we go through potential lists that you might want to delve deeper into uh, and test them out, playing them yourself and how they work, how they play, etc. Uh, this time we're, we've got four lists to talk about at the ready and we're going to jump straight into it. So uh, I'm going to show a visual representation of what we're talking about for those of you that are watching this not listening uh, in any podcast places. So uh, we're going to start with a hypercrypt list. Now, bear in mind, I've done these on TTS, and uh, for some reason, the Nightbringer model wasn't working. Uh, but the Nightbringer is included in all three that I will be showing in this manner. Uh, so, uh, Gitto, over to you. This is the hypercrypt one. Yes, yes. So that's one of the hypercrypt lists you can build with the monolith. Uh, I think it's, I, I think it's the mine list that I was actually playing for some time. But uh, it's very similar in, to to the list that uh, USA have at Pira in some regards, and uh, like there's a little bit from Team USA, a little bit from Team England. That were on team uh, on the Pyra Cup. It's mm -hmm. basically a hypercrypt with the uh, um, two Satans, as you said, the Void Dragon Nightbringer. Then you have two blobs that are uh, playing with uh, Monolith. So you have Monolith uh, that gives you ability to run with your infantry units to him. Mm -hmm. You have a unit of warriors with the Chronomancer, which allows you to drop within three, shoot, give yourself a little bit of space on objective. And after the whole turn of shooting, uh, you can shoot them last, obviously, and then get on objective and deny your opponent primary. A very strong combo. It can also like move block your opponents, and if they try to commit and don't have the right tools, you just recall them to monolith when you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, the second unit that play with the monolith is a unit of Canoptic Braids and a Technomancer. It's a unit that you usually want to keep uh, closed, uh, like taking the punch for your Satan before the Satan need to take it. So that mm -hmm. it's all like it's a kind of screen unit or a unit you usually try to uh, not teleport and just keep on the board. But if you need to, because your commits over like your opponent over commits into it, you can still uh, because of the Technomancer the unit teleport it to the monolith. Mm -hmm. And then you have Illuminor Sheras as I see. Uh, uh let's yeah. say that yes that's him <laughs> yeah yeah so the illuminar sheras is a very like for what it costs it's a great unit uh it can be skipped maybe in the hypercrypt lists but for for what it costs the durability and the loan up ability is just very strong. And they he also gives a lot of value to Necron Warriors, giving them better AP and Armor of Contempt if it's near. Uh, it's just a very cool tech piece that is opening the games for you. He can just push onto objective or into the middle to homers and just don't give a fuck about anyone. If someone tries to kill him, he need your opponent need to commit way more points than what he costs. And then from the counter charges and so on, you can try to kill the stuff that were dealing with him. Then in this is he uh, is he an infantry model? He is an infantry model, yeah. He don't look like it. He have bigger base than the Nightbringer. But he's an infantry yeah. model for some reason. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Then you have a hex mark just because he have deep strikes, so the hyper crypt works very well with him. Also, mm -hmm. having a lone op that can is cheap enough to just stand on your home objective and can take the dimensional over lord to uh, reposition one more unit when you taking them off the table. It's quite okay ability. Uh, his free overwatch, his shooting back are also, for what it costs, a very good investment. Just overall, very good one. A very good unit for what it costs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then you may have reanimator, which is supposed to keep near the monolith. So when you take some casualties and teleport the unit near monolith, uh, if they get beaten and you don't really need to get the unit uh, like raids uh, off the table again and like drop it somewhere, you're gonna heal a little bit a little bit more. You also heal the monolith more. You can also be in some uh, cases in range of the Satan and heal them a little bit. Also, mm -hmm. the raids units are very cool for that because the Technomancer can kill heal. heal uh, either monolith or the uh, setans so basically in this list if you don't finish off one of the big units the big the big pieces they're gonna regenerate quite rapidly mm -hmm. and but the main reason why you have reanimator is for 75 points uh it is just a quite durable unit with the uh, six wounds three up save uh four up feel no pain like you mm -hmm. actually need to shoot something quite nasty into him, and if you don't, he gonna heal a lot uh, during through the game. Mm. Mm -hmm. Then we have like solo locus destroyer, which is just a a unit you need to have in your army to just stand somewhere. Uh, then you have the six man unit of bikes. One of them have Tesla. Five of them have. Particle casters. I think that's the most controversial unit in this list. It basically trying to do what warriors are doing, but for way cheaper. Uh, and the idea of it is to, when the warriors would take too much of a hit, or your opponent have tools to deal with warriors, and you don't need to like take three objectives for your opponent at the same time. You just need to like take one objective. Maybe uh, when you kill something, you just need to take two objectives. You have a unit that also can be dropped within three inches, also can move after they shot. They have enough shooting to kill like chaff units with their particle uh, beamers. Mm -hmm. And they have the Tesla that gives them assault, so they can do actions after they advance if they really need to. Uh, they have nine inch scout, 12 inch move, uh, six inch move out, they, they shot, they can advance and shoot. Like they are really, really fast unit and every single one of those two bases is OC2. So you can steal objectives for your opponent quite easily. And then you have a three man unit, the same idea that you have something that can like maybe steal objectives in your opponent, but they also, if you play fix, can be a unit that will do, or even if you play tactical and you get like behind enemy license and something stupid in turn one, they can move nine scout, 12 with their movement then advance shoot and move six more which is your deployment uh, your opponent deployment zone every time mm -hmm. uh, and if you need to do homers in your opponent deployment zone on a decent roll to advance they can also do it so just a uh, opening of the game unit basically uh, for mm -hmm. what they cost they're quite good uh, and they yeah. also have a scout move so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's As I said, like the both coffee. units have scout move, which is and the nine inch scout move, which is huge. Yeah. Uh, are you taking the oh no infiltrations and knop the courts? Oh, never mind that. Um, are there any enhancements on the characters here? Yeah, I, think I there don't were... remember it like exactly, but I think the chrono monster have the four year old to hit for warriors. Uh, it obviously works better if you have a plasma monster in the unit, uh, but for what it costs, uh, it makes them not hit on force, 
because they got nerfed uh, between uh, like ninth edition, 10th edition. So mm -hmm. now they are hitting on force. He makes them full reroll when they deep strike, which just makes them like deal some damage and actually like clear chaff from objectives before they gonna uh, they, they do their move after shooting. Mm -hmm. It's not mandatory. It's just how the points work out, and I think it's quite okay. Like this, in my opinion, in this particular list, is better than one more solo locust. Uh, okay. Yeah. Overall, the list is focused like you have basically a huge blob of the Nightbringer, Void Dragon, Monolith, Reanimator, Raids that are pushing one of the flanks. And then you have like three pieces that can steal objectives for your opponent quite decently, like the Warriors with Chronomancer that, like basically the units that can move up they, they sh after they shot. Mm -hmm. And like between that and three inch deep strike, you can like quite decently steal objectives from your opponent. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of mobility. Yeah, 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 exactly. So the list is not that much about killing. It's usually about you have like a huge ball of durable stuff that can also punch quite decent mm -hmm. if it gets close plus a lot of primary denial and you also do your scoring uh, quite decent so uh, in terms of secondaries what does this list want to play uh, do you want to be playing tactical uh, so that you can occasionally get an extra CP just to have the CP for the pulling back of the warriors or race Mm -hmm. um, and the other stratagems as well, like the fringe deep strike, you'll probably be using quite often. Or are you comfortable playing fix and just using those bikes for turn one homers for four points? And yeah, so, I so. think you can do both. Uh, mm -hmm. In most cases, I would just pick like depending on the mission, your opponent, and so on. But the, like a safe bet is uh, behind and uh, homers. It's just okay. You can mm -hmm. do also like cleanse and uh, homers. In that case, like s some of the units can like string out on two objectives and two cleanse on two objectives at the same time. Um, and you can also play tactical. But if I want to really play tactical, I think I would like reduce the big six man uh, bike unit to uh, two three men in total and just have like more chaff okay it's like solo units to make that uh, tactical uh, not tactical tactical uh, basically the mm, cards came better mm -hmm. yeah so tactical um, right and what are the really good pairings for this kind of hypercrypt list and what are some bad ones? Yeah, so the question is quite simple. Can your opponent deal with warriors uh, easily? Mm -hmm. If your opponent cannot deal with warriors and they're gonna multi do the trick with your primary disappearing multiple times, uh, this list is gonna smash it. Uh, it might struggle into like very, very aggressive armies, like maybe war eaters or like the resurgence of blood angels, mm -hmm. uh, because it doesn't really have that much damage. Uh, it has a lot of the tricks, it's quite tanky, but those armies are just insane damage. Uh, and at the same time, quite uh, survivable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it it a little bit depends, but I think it might have problems against those armies. And mm -hmm. they will maybe have problem against Votan if they are played very well and have like uh, at least a blob, but preferably two blobs of Terminators, the mm -hmm. hard card. I, I hard guard, so, eh, the, yeah, the, hard the, the, the half guard, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and those might be quite difficult. Uh, 
yeah, it might not be that good against guard if it goes second, because you're running away near monolith, don't really work that well because the artillery is faster than teleporting, as we can uh, clearly see in this game. Mm -hmm. So that's that. But like, if you get like I don't know Eldar matchup, you're gonna just smash it completely. If you get like uh, I don't know, um, maybe uh, sisters. No, no, like th that's the problem. I I really prefer the Canoptech, and now I'm thinking like I try to compare <laughs> this one to Canoptech, and just Canoptech mm -hmm. is just straight up better. But like, if you get a good matchups, this is gonna be better at it. Maybe some dev guard list will have problems with it, depending on the list. Like it's very it's pretty much a question can you deal with the units that are gonna steal try to steal your primary? If you can't you fact if you can then we have a game. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add uh, about this hypercrypt list, mm -hmm. or shall we move on? I think we should. We can, we can move on. Okay. So next up, we've got something also very interesting. Uh, my screen is not showing what I want to show. So let give me a short moment to bring up the next list. There we go. Mm -hmm. But it's not it's not uh, the Annihilation Legion, unfortunately. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that kind of list is a little bit uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's basically two satans, a uh, blob of raids, and then all the shooting you can get. Uh, I think it has its strong matchups when you can just shoot your opponent off the table. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, against some of the Terranid lists, uh, not the Endless Worm, but some of the others. You can just kill them very, very quickly with all your shooting. Uh, so you have Namebringer, you have Void Dragon. The Wraith unit can be changed for a Transcendent Satan. So then you have your typical archetype of spamming Satans uh, mm -hmm. and just winning because you're you're basically doing a stat check on your opponent. And if your opponent don't have good tools to deal with Satans and you have a whole bunch of shooting units behind it like three the three big units of heavy destroyers mm -hmm. the, the unit of mm -hmm. you go, usual normal locusts like you have quite a ban quite a lot of shooting you have some prime uh, some secondary games with the solo locust hex mark and uh, tomb blades uh three main tomb blades unit as described before uh, the usual idea is you bring a Zetan spam unit uh, arm list that was playing before the monoliths where it used so much in hypercrypt, at least in Poland. That was the meta for some point for some time that the monoliths weren't really played. And yeah. uh, we played a lot of Zetan in the hypercrypt. Uh, but changing one of the transcendents into a brave unit with a Technomancer, uh, just because I think a lot of armies start to build uh, their lists to deal with Satans. And mm -hmm. that Brave unit is like just doing wonders to keep your Satan alive by taking charges on themselves, exposing themselves first, uh, taking the healing from Technomancer and just fixing the Satans a little bit more. So I think it's basically like it's gonna make your satans live longer than having one more satan and you can like you know lose one and then you still have two and here you try to not lose any and just mm -hmm. like do raids to the dying part right so this is also hypercrypt uh yes. would you say it plays 
very differently to the previous list. I think it does very yes. well the monolith. Yes, 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 yes. This one tried to kill you and start to check you with the uh, Satan's pushing you. So the previous one was trying to deny you points. This one tried to deny you living. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think you missing. Very thematic. I think you missing a prayer stalker in it. Uh, or I did something wrong. Let's let's see. Let's see what you've sent to me. Um, no, that might be okay. You must yeah. have missed it. Yeah, I must have missed it. it. Yeah. So in similar list, very often what you do, you bring the prayer stalker because if he shoots something. It uh, ignores cover for all your army after mm -hmm. that. So it makes this shooting way more efficient, especially the ex the little shots, heavy destroyers with, with the Lord having KP1 uh, and then ignore cover. It's very good. Um, yeah. And also, it's a piece with the scout move, which helps you turn your play, turn, play your turn one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so it and can't be included in this kind of list. Right. And uh, the same question again. Uh, what would you say are some good matchups for this list? What would you say are some bad ones? Okay, so for example, the Iron Storm. Like a lot, like all the great gladiators lists, mm -hmm. I think might struggle against this because this, if you put the locust lord in the big unit of locust, uh, the six man unit, you have a pretty decent uh, unit to shoot the vehicles, then you have mm -hmm. your six heavy shots from the heavy locust destroyers, you still have your satans. Especially Void Dragon, if he touches the vehicles, he's just, just gonna kill them. Uh, yeah. But it has its problems also, uh, which is basically if you're gonna get start to get tagged, you can't really do much with the, uh, all the locusts that shoot. Because mm -hmm. you, can, you can't uh, go back into reserves when you're no, in engagement no, no, range, no, right? And do then. It. You also don't have any fall back and shoot mechanisms mm -hmm. um, with destroyers. So yeah. that could be a solution, but they're still hard to catch if they're jumping around. Yeah, yeah. You basically and, uh, focus on the flank, build a, like a wall of freights and satans and shoot behind from behind it. And then you teleport on the other side and do the same again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, right, so uh, those were the two hypercrypt lists uh, that we were going to discuss. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else to add on the hypercrypt legion? Yeah, like you can build list in between those two. You can build like list that will deny your opponent points and have monolith with the warrior trick and still have some shooting and damage potential. Or like you can have monolith, a lot of satans, and a warrior blob without any bikes, without any like other tech pieces, just mm -hmm. to have that one or two turns of warriors doing the nasty denying primary, and then the uh, satan doing the stat check and just you know pushing your opponent off the table. Uh, mm -hmm. You can mix and match all those like approach between start checking with sedans, killing your opponent with decent shooting because you're mobile and denying your opponent's points. And I think like all of those approaches, depending on like if you're going singles or you're going teams and what's your role, role in a team and what matchups you want to target, you can like m be quite flexible with mm -hmm. the hypercrypt list what do you want to really prey upon so uh the like hypercrypt lists will have very different uh matchups depending on the list which is not uh usually true about like canoptic lists mm -hmm. so uh, hypercrypt is uh i want to say more volatile but 
I don't think that's the word I'm looking for. So you I have more is. greens and reds, and yeah. uh, the Canopta court is a bit more flat. Uh, yes, if we can call it that. Having yes, yes, a lot yes. more yellows. Yeah, like the basically, meta. Uh, depending how you build your hypercrypt, you're gonna have some matchups that are very good and some matchups that are quite bad. Uh, you can also try to build a list that will just deny your opponent scoring and score uh, like all the points from secondaries on fix, mm -hmm. no matter what. And that's also an idea of a list. But if you want to build something that's going to play against anything, I think Canoptech is still better if you do it properly. Okay. Uh, we will get to uh, that. Uh, yeah, actually, let's let's jump into the Knopt court. So uh, I'm going to present another list. It again still has the Nightbringer in it, even if he doesn't show up. And there we go. Mm -hmm. So get the what's in this one? Okay, so this one have three units of race. Uh, through three Doomstalkers, uh, Hexmark Destroyer because Lone of Good, the Illuminor Sheras because being tanky Lone of is even better than being a Lone of. <laughs> uh, and also in the Canoptech, he actually can punch the targets he wants to punch quite well, like I don't know, uh, eight bounds. Maybe mm -hmm. not necessarily the exalted ones, but the usual ones. He can ha like, kill quite efficiently, like uh, chosen, like basically any like space marines profiles. He's gonna mm -hmm. be very happy killing. Like he's quite decent at what he does. He also can like threaten to deal some damage to Rhino to finish it off or like start chipping away on it uh, with his shooting and uh, between his shooting and melee, like. He's a very, very solid piece. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we have a unit of Tesla Immortals with the Chronomancer. So basically, if you're playing the uh, Canoptic card, uh, you should usually have some unit of Immortals. And you usually, in my opinion, you should have them on Teslas because Assault is very good. And for your roll to hit when your 6 is x double sustain uh, are really good. Mm -hmm. uh, though uh, you have still a choice, and both choice, in my opinion, are correct. You can have a Chronomancer for the unit to be a little bit more tanky and much more survivable because they move after they shoot and they are more mobile at the same time. Or you can have a Plasma Mancer, which is just rough damage. Mm -hmm. Just like the plasma monster itself, he deals a lot of damage. Then the unit that is uh, having the sustain, uh, the critical on fives, so you can have sustain on fives. You can have in that case even lethals if you take Gauss on fives. And between that and full roll to hit, it gets really nasty both directions. Like if you go for uh, lethals on fives or sustain on fives with free roll to hit because of the power matrix is just nasty to have that unit. And you kind of need something to deal with the little chaff running around. You don't really want your brave unit chasing cultists or like Norgwings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then to finish it off, there's three units of like chaffy little objective monkeys, objective. I don't know, grabbers that like stay behind when you clear area, which are two units of solo locus destroyer because are they are the cheapest unit you can have in the codex mm -hmm. for 30 points. And they are like for what they cost, they are quite decent. Even if like like they don't die to a random last gun because they are still string toughness six, three up safe, uh three wounds for 30 yep. points, which is quite OK. And then you have one unit of stream, a three man unit of Scarabs, which are in Canoptech quite funny in some cases, because they are 40 points. They're cheap. Uh, 
from the codex and the index change, they get OC if there is a, a cryptic within six. Mm -hmm. And playing Canoptic, you have a lot of cryptics, so they can have OC. And at the same time, they are Canoptic, so they can get long up and moving away. In most cases, there is no point wasting that very vulnerable, like very good stratagems on them. Mm -hmm. But if you don't expose any Doomstalkers, if you don't expose any raids in like turn one, for example, in some cases, like against War Eaters, you don't really want to overexpose those units if you're going first. You can just send Scarabs and string them out on an objective. And if someone commits into them, but like commits just a little bit, so for example, gets within nine inches and with the melee unit, you can just run away. Or if it, someone like want to shoot them, but want to shoot them from far away because they don't want to get close to raids, you can one up them. So they are like very nice tech piece. And also like they're at the start of the fight phase, they can explode. There are some mortal wounds, which is very cool. Uh, overall, this list, I think it's uh, the controversial thing here is having only two Technomancers because Technomancers are good in Wraiths units. Mm -hmm. And the, basically the choice was I was playing this list with three Technomancers and only one solo Locus Destroyer, which gave me one more like enhancement. Here you have uh, Infiltration on one of the Wraiths unit and have the CP region on the Chronomancer just because the guard matchup exists. And if you're going second into guard matchup, if they have Wolverines, kind of want to have that additional CP to run away with the infiltrating unit and at the same time have lone up somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's something. Uh, yeah, and the idea... Okay, I'm going to get back to the why there's only two units of Technomancers. So, in my games, when I was playing the list with three Technomancers, I find out that very often the unit of raids that is not uh, on the front line, the, the first to go. Uh, don't really need the Technomancer that much because I'm pushing my opponent fast enough between using my shooting, using my wraiths, uh, the mortals, flyover mortals, and between doing their uh, like some damage in melee. They are not amazing, but in some against some targets they are like decent. Uh, you don't really need that much of uh, more durability in the list when you don't have any chaff to hold your backline and you like spore mines doing uh, behind homers in your deployment zone all the game. And if you <laughs> want to prevent that, you need to keep like a Doomstalker back there. He cannot like push. So what I just traded is some safety of having three units of durable raids for more better secondary play for me and at the same time worse secondary play for my opponent uh, plus in some very specific matchups not having infantry keyword like against uh play like death guard in some cases can be quite good uh, and also in some cases the only defense for for even raids is either lone up or running away because if they get caught they die because like half of the army gonna fight them uh, in that cases not having the character in it it's like lowering the cost of the one of the first trades if you send them first and you only relying on running away and lone up for their survival, which is like very edge case, but uh, you know, yeah. So basically that you just, I traded just a little bit mm -hmm. of defensive stats for much more, much better uh, place with the chap units. Overall, also, what I find very cool about this list is I'm surprised how Immortals with Chronomancer and New Sheras are into very specific damage profiles. Like, for example, in Mirror, they, if your opponent don't have Pyrometrics, 
you can quite easily just jam Immortals with Chronomancer and uh, Illuminor Sheras near into Raid's unit and just stay there. Like, Raid's don't have full back in charge. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can actually hold them for a turn because Raid's in that case would be hitting on fives and ha the Immortals would have three up safe because Armor of Contempt from Sheras. Also, similar stuff holds true against like a little beaten up unit of Bullgreen. You can also tie the Bullgreen unit with that. Uh, and because Illuminor Sheras is so fucking tanky that it's unbelievable, he costs 160 points. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of understand why, but at the same time, it's a ridiculous defensive profile for what it costs. You can do silly stuff like charging Immortals and Sheras into three man unit of exalted and angron and saying you know for this turn you're gonna stay with me and you will not kill it because like uh sheras is decent against killing the ex the um, eight bounds so he's gonna kill some mm -hmm. and after that between minus one damage uh, minus one to hit armor of contempt even the swipe from angron you save on force and he cannot really kill Sheras, which is extremely tanky, and Immortals at the same time. So you can like very often grab something with them. And usually what the Immortals do is like they, for two or three turns, they just jump out, shoot something, move back, mm -hmm. and just clear chaff. But at some point, they are very fast way to get a lot of OC on the objectives. And in edge cases, they can like grab someone, hug, and don't let go. Also, if they are near Sheras and you have power matrix and your opponent is on an objective, they are quite decent in melee because they turn this unit to have like uh, 20 attacks on threes for reroll with strength four, AP one for reroll, which like can kill the weaker profiles. Even can kill like I know I don't know like I did on the Pyra like a couple of warp talents or some uh, raptors, like between their melee of them and the chronomancer, they can actually deal a surprising amount of damage, uh, considering they should be like no melee unit mm -hmm. base. Uh, yeah, so the list is basically a pressure list that also rely in some case, like it's basically live and dice on the true stratagems, running away and lone up, which makes it so you don't really trade raid units very mm -hmm. often. You usually just trade either no da no damage on them or just you spend CP and your opponent exposes himself and you can punch back afterwards or you prevent your opponent to committing too much into them. So you lose only some raids, they're gonna start to reanimate, you change the fight into like grinding contest and between you reanimating and healing with Technomancers, at some point you're gonna win. Like those stratagems are also, the running away in the lone up are really good to spread damage over your army. Usually mm -hmm. like at some point you will not be able to protect every unit in your army with the lone up but you can make it so that your opponent spreads damage between different units and the rates are tanky enough that you can allow allow that. For example, Tyranids and the Vanguards like have so squishy unit. If something shoots at the unit that would get blown up, it's going to probably kill it or kill enough that it's going to be irrelevant. If you mm -hmm. shoot a little bit out of rates, and after that, they get lone up and they get reanimation, they get heal from uh, Technomancer, and you needed to change target and shoot other unit of raids. You spread the damage because between two units, both gonna reanimate, both gonna heal a little bit, and you don't do like you do way less damage after the reanimations because you spread damage between different units. Mm -hmm. So that's very, 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 very. Uh, what how it usually goes with this list also three dooms between three doom stalkers share us and the immortals this is enough shooting that against like very melee focused armies you can pull out the edge because you can you have shooting they don't really do 
and you have also quite a lot of overwatches that can be deadly like doom stalkers uh, having overwatch on five plus and with the pyrometries having ability to have a reroll then a hex mark can also fire overwatch for free even the same turn and mm -hmm. hitting on twos with six minus two or oh, damage one but uh strength six minus two damage one ignore cover before it was precision now it's ignore cover and think it's actually a buff for a hex mark that it has that so like you what i often found is my opponent needs to commit very hard into raids so they don't run away or either he takes a risk or need to commit very hard into raids because he can stay outside of nine and nine, nine, nine uh, risk a nine inch charge if he fails mm -hmm. i have enough shooting to punish him and if he uh try to commit like very deep into me i can also make his longer, uh, charges longer or uh, shoot overwatch with doomstalker then shoot overwatch with hex mark so one when he finishes moving one when he start to charge and between those two overwatches like i don't know 20 men uh, orcs unit can get reduced enough that when they connect into raids finally they not just not gonna wipe them just kill like most of raids but then you like pull back the raids a little bit you have another turn of shooting and like next turn raids are good to go to go back into the fight mm -hmm. you reanimate again yeah yeah et cetera, et cetera. yeah so, it's um... basically this mm -hmm. list play a little bit like chess you always protect your uh, figures with other figures if you know what i mean like you don't overextend like even though i have infiltration and very often I, if i go first the infiltrating unit even though he could connect into my opponent first i don't do it you just mm -hmm. cannot overextend what you do you keep all the raids in this position that they can get to su be supported by the other units a night bringer or your shooting and just force your opponent to do bad trades because you have your lone up and you're running away strat. So do you really not lack the feel no pain on that third wraith unit? Yeah, so as I discussed, uh, in cases when you don't really use three units of raids as a stat check in this detachment, because mm -hmm. you, you, if you do, and a lot of armies just can deal with them, because you don't have that much damage, that, that much damage. You really, your damage is really your shooting, and I bring her, and uh, like it's between all that little mortal wounds, dev wounds from raids, your shooting, and I bring her. That's your damage, and to bring that damage to bear, you need your opponent to kind of connect into you. So, and for him to connect not efficiently, you don't build a wall of raids. You just expose your units in such a way that between the running away and lone up, you will make your opponent have bad trade or don't trade at all because you're going to lose a little bit of raids. You're going to lose whole units. So very uh, much what happens often is that two raids units with Technomancer are dancing in front of my army and then the third unit of race is like a counter charge or like a finishing move after you already done the damage and you just need bodies to push on the objectives uh, and in the opposite uh, circumstances when even if they had feel no pain they would not survive very well it's exposing them first and using lone up and running away on them so your opponent still need to connect like Commit deep into you, losing a little bit less points can be cool, can be good. And most of the units that can actually kill raids quite efficiently have either uh, plus one to wound because you have a character or like four rerolls because you have a character mm -hmm. unit or a monster unit. So like Alarus custodians. I mean, I don't saying like they kill the raids, but like the units that can that are dangerous to raids are yeah, very yeah. often like either 
you need to be a vehicle or, or monster or have a character in your unit. And at the same time, uh, if something kills them anyway, uh, or like almost kills them anyway, it's just a cheaper trait to not have the Technomancer. And as mm -hmm. I said, there is nothing wrong with having three Technomancers. It's just that uh, during my games, I find out that I really need uh, three Doomstalkers to deal damage and to have like units that cover me with Overwatch. I need Hexmark because Overwatch, but the more importantly, it Hifax, Guard, and other like shooting gunline armies because you have a lot of that can stand on objective and it's basically safe when you have like Wraiths doing stuff in front of him. And uh, then you have the Sheras, which is just insane value and gives your immortals actually quite a bit of damage into a lot of profiles between mm -hmm. the ignoring. Between the solar pools that ignores cover, between them having plus one uh, better AP and better armor safe, and him being just a uh, extremely efficient data sheet, and actually the data sheet that opens most of the games, because in this detachment, if he goes like in front of your army and start doing, for example, homers or stand on the objective, you either need to. Uh, bring OC to like over OC him and his OC is three, so it cannot be something silly like a rhino. You'd actually need to send something that have a little bit OC, and that's the best way to deal with him for like one or two, two turns. But if you try, you need to kill him or you want to kill him, uh, because he's like blindly pushing into your lanes because mm -hmm. you don't give a fuck. Uh, if you kill him, you need to commit something that is quite big and nasty, and then you get the, the reward for killing him is plus one to hit, plus one to wound for all the kind of tech units. So all the Doomstalkers or the Wraiths have plus one to hit, plus one yeah, to wound. Yeah. So you really need him also. Uh, you need Tesla Immortals to clear chaff, so you don't chase other stuff with the units. So coming like down to it, you need three units of raids, you need three Doomstalkers, you need Hexmark, you need Sheras, you need Immortals. And that means you have no like 30, 30 points to spare, which is one Locus Destroyer. And where do, what you cut to get a little bit more chaff? And the answer was for me, one of the Technomancers, because it is mm -hmm. not as important. It's a safer safer play to have the third Technomancer, but if you play your game right, the unit, the one of the raid unit will not be used uh, in the capacity that requires them to have the five plus final pain to work. Like if you need to plan ahead, you need to be more safe. You need to like plan your game a little bit better because one of the brave units is a little bit different than two others. But if you do it correctly, I don't think it impacts the game that much. And okay, that, having more chaff is a huge difference, actually. That was a very comprehensive answer. And the thing that you've mentioned last of having more chaff actually brings me to my next question. So again, about secondaries, does this list feel comfortable playing tactical? Because again, you need to have two CP in your, mm. at least two in each of your opponent's turns. That's by the sound of it. So one mm -hmm. for the reactive move, one for loan up. And ideally you want to be overwatching with the Doomstalkers each turn. Yeah, yeah. So this list in previous iterations have the Illuminor and, uh, and the, the Stormlord to have a bit more OC, uh, more CP. So he gave like the third CP doing the battle round in your command phase. So you have two CP in your command phase, but mm -hmm. because uh, he is not here, and um, in some matchups you not you need more CP. This list can play tacticals, though. What I found is if you like be very restrictive to yourself about how you use your CP. Uh, in most cases, excluding no-loss armies matchups, 
which is basically guard and maybe some of the sisters lists because uh weir wins are not that good of a profile into you so mm -hmm. basically it's guard or uh sisters with like two or three exorcist which you also can't like exorcist don't have range on the whole table so turn one you don't need the loan up that much you you probably will need it but you know it's doable without it uh between those two matchups the first turn or two you can like get some cp that you will not spend mm -hmm. and then during the game that's your like free cp to spend during the game and because this list have the illuminor share us and quite good uh board control i would say you could i i usually play fixed with it which is homer's and preferably killing something that my opponent gives a lot if mm -hmm. it's not it can be cleanse if I play very defensive game against something because Braves have pistols, even if they get caught in melee at some point, they still have, can do actions in melee. Uh, or like engage, but engage is a, like a secondary pick because uh, you want to play in a very, very specific way. So usually what I would do is play uh, fixed and pick homers and something that your opponent gives you don't need to aim to max out the score on the secondaries do, during that doing that you just need to get close to the max scores and uh, win by denying your opponent primary and scoring primary uh, with this list more uh, but in some cases when there is like not good second secondary to go with homers you can definitely play tactical and should be fine. It's not the best list to play tactical, but between uh, matchups that actually matters mm -hmm. uh, for you to play tactical, so for example, War Eaters, I think you either can play fixed and play very defensively, or play tactical and play like very. Uh, stretching your opponent out into different directions uh, and between the tool solo locus and the hex mark that can is free in the deep strike don't need to stand on your home objective and deny your opponent no lost ability to take your home objective uh, he can go into deep strike and also be like a secondary monkey so there are actually like ways to play tactical with this what I, as I said, usually when I play it, I play fixed just because there is something that your opponent gives. Either it's assassination or bringing down, or the mission is very, very good to play. I don't know, something like a cleanse because you're playing six objectives. And like one unit of raids or one unit of immortals can do like big cleanses uh, during like turn three, four, five when you're pushing your opponent mm -hmm. to the table. Okay, I've got one last list. Uh, it doesn't have a TTS representation because I only saw it earlier today. Um, however, oh, we're going to just put something on screen in a second. This is a list played by Josh Roberts. He's just won the Goonhammer GT this past weekend, I believe it was. Um, it's also Canoptic court which uh didn't seem to be the more popular option as we've said in part one of the codex review uh but it is get us more much more preferred one so let's go through it uh so can up the court illuminor zeras then three triple plasmansa and just triple technomancer uh 10 man unit of immortals and two five man units and then two units of acanthrites two doomstalkers two units of scarabs and finally three units of wraiths uh, presumably all joined by the technomancers mm -hmm. so all immortals yeah so all immortals have Get the uh, plasma, plasma mancer, mancers, or yeah. wraiths have uh, technomancer 
So basically this list is what I, like I had a, not the same list, but a similar idea of list. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, answering question, what happens when Satan's, Satan's gets nerfed? Yep. And because like during my games with Canoptech, I find out that Nightbringer is actually one of the worst pieces in that in the list that we were discussing before. So I was wondering with similar stuff. And uh, as we can see, Josh Roberts already like show us the way what you can do if you don't want to play any Satans in Canoptech. You can just pick uh, three plasma answers, which are quite a lot of mortal wounds and quite decent profiles also uh, in shooting. So basically, uh, the, the uh, Canoptic card have one problem and it is killing very tough like vehicle stuff. Mm -hmm. if, if you want to do that, you either need to like roar very well or doom stalkers, which you shouldn't like really rely upon. Or you need to use a lot of like the race rule to fly over it, vehicles, which is also unreliable and can be countered by your opponent if they do it right, because you need to make a normal move, not a fallback, for example. So uh, what you need is some way to deal damage to tougher units like vehicles. And in this list, instead of bringing Nightbringer, which is like very Campbell, so like very slow, very hard to use damage dealer against like big tough units, the Josh Roberts brings two units of Scarabs, which mm -hmm. do mortal wounds when they charge in, and three units of Plasma Monsters, which deal mortal wounds, and between power metrics, giving them four euro to hit, because they base hit on force, but they have really good weapon. They have Three shots, as I remember, strength seven, AP three, damage two. So a very decent like shooting profile for five, 55 points. In the Canoptic card, they get four euro to hit. So the four up hitting, hitting four up is not a, that big of a problem. And because they are joining immortals in your, if your opponent is standing on an objective, they get four euro to wound. Also, they get ability because it's Canoptic to ignore cover. And Sharas, because they are joining Immortals, gives them a uh, better AP. So you can have four year old to hit, four year old to wound, three shots, seven, three, uh, seven, minus four, damage two, ignore cover, mm -hmm. and you have three units of those. And also, <laughs> every single of those plasma monsters has the ability to roll a dice. You, just, I think, select the unit within 18 of the um, Plasma Monster, and you roll four dice on a four up is a mortal. Then you have more. So to sum it up, you have quite decent shooting with them. And between them doing mortals, Scarabs doing mortals, especially good into vehicles because they have like plus one to the roll. So they always do at least D3 and a five plus they do three mortals. And mm -hmm. afterwards, if the Scarabs don't die, they reanimate the guy because they have they lose the whole base. So no matter what you roll, if they don't get damage, you get the guy back. So every turn you can do it. And uh, between that, so Plasma Master, Scarabs, Vraids having uh, flyover mortals, which works basically like a grenade, but a little bit more difficult to use, uh, but it's no CP. Uh, and uh, also using your uh, the move stratagem allows you to move over stuff and do mortals also. If the six inch reactive move, also, if you manage to fly over something, you can do mortals again. Mm -hmm. And the braids having uh, quite a lot shots with uh, strength pistols with strength five, AP zero, damage one, but dev wounds. You can like not kill vehicles with one huge shot, but just have so many sources of cheap damage, mortal wounds, dev wounds, that you just melt them slowly, like you grind against them, but you have so many sources, you just actually kill uh, very tough units with that. So it's basically like different approach to dealing with very tough units. One of the ways is bring up uh, vo uh, the Nightbringer or Void Dragon. I prefer Nightbringer because of the base size. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the other idea is to bring a lot of heavy locust destroyers with the big guns, but they don't really benefit with, from the detachment and they are quite expensive if you consider other options. And the third option is, as we can see, bringing plasma monsters, which are a very nice source of like a sustained damage to anything and a very good damage into a lot of profiles. Like they cut through plague marines like it's no tomorrow like they just delete them mm -hmm. uh between all of that shooting the only problem i have with this list is that the plasma monsters in the immortal units even though they benefit from armor of contempt from the uh, illuminar sheras are still decently decently squishy so if someone have, for example, like very decent Nola shooting <coughs> or can like tank the turn of damage because of chaff or something, they can just take the damage on themselves. And after that shoot back at the immortals, they will just fold. But at the same time, it's a very cool idea to have only a plasma monster with immortals like five minutes of immortals so it's if i recall correctly uh, 125 points so it's so much damage also can be objective monkeys because immortals have assault like there is so many layers for that unit to be actually good like what they can do and i really like that approach i didn't have this exact approach I was having a similar ideas with plasma monsters in some capacity, mm -hmm. but I really like the idea of having three of them and just being nasty with uh, how efficient they can be for their points. The only problem I have with this list is I obviously giving a lot of assassinate and it's the assassinate is not really on a difficult targets. Like the plasma monsters is quite easy to pick up. You're also gonna pick up like one or two techno monsters. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, that was a very thorough analysis, as always from Gita. I've got two questions, two last questions for you. They're not any list related, but Sam has asked them in our contact loss Discord. So first up is. What is your process for keeping things fun, fresh, and engaging when building and playing new lists? As generally, playing the same faction for many can get old quickly, but not for mm. you. So how do you do it? Okay, so I experiment with a lot of stuff and a lot of different weird stuff. So I usually have a list that is, like, I know it's don't do me well for a long time, but I like try to find like little tweaks and little changes, and I test like little changes. So in the context of the on the context of the list, like it's not a huge change that it's make the list unworkable, like don't work. But you mm -hmm. do small adjustments, see how different units perform when you do small adjustments. For example, is the dropping one of the Technomancers, like looking at the games, what can I improve? How can I, what happens in the game that I can change and maybe get some edge? And like uh, what different I can bring. Also, I sometimes play very like wacky list, just so, you know, for fun. Like uh, at one point, it's actually not a, uh, uh necron related army that i play fun list but you know weird stuff <laughs> happens if you play that warhammer for that long and that much uh, mm -hmm. so i played like with a huge guard crasius transport filled with ogrins that were coming out and shooting with ap three or four ignore cover for your all to wound <laughs> like you know some wacky idea you just sometimes you take detox by playing something weird mm -hmm. and from playing something weird some ideas and some like in the small smaller scale scale stuff can stick into the lists or if you have a very well built list that you feel it's optimal trying to find an edge 
uh, by looking what happened in like a couple of games you had. So for me it was I'm losing more points for my opponent dropping like I don't know five scions in my deployment zone than me uh, having a little bit less durable units of raids. So I need to find chaff. I know that mm -hmm. rest of the list works very well and I can't really drop any of the components or I can, but that's gonna expose me to one of the armies. And I, if I want to have like very good matchups against all of them, I gonna need all those pieces. So what can I drop? And the choice was to drop the one of the Technomancers because it makes my ga game for me, it ga gets my game to be more clear. I need to play better. I can't make as many mistakes and I need to plan ahead more. But if I do it correctly, I have more, I have higher ceiling to get, right? Basically, because mm -hmm. I'm denying my opponent's points. My secondary game is better. I just need to be more careful how I position my raids and which unit of raids go where. Yeah, so like a couple of things. Experiment with uh, like wacky list, play for fun sometimes, just like take a detox. Then tr maybe try to think what work in that weird list or pick a list that works very well and include like small pieces that seem not really that good, but just to, like find something uh, interesting in them. And also uh, that's gonna uh, be, be, be uh, mind blowing to some of the people that know me. I also like not know me, but not, don't know me very well. Uh, I also like like to play like very bullshit lists from other armies. I don't own them. I just play them on TTS for like one or two games. But changing the perspective of a uh, other army and like trying the stuff uh, in other lists, like I know for for example, I know uh, Necrons don't have this much good melee. And I know that buffs to melee are very hard to come by in Necrons. Mm -hmm. And I just want to feel how 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 the army works when I have something that is very good in melee, buffs melee very well and scales like melee. So I play a corn demons list with the blood trons for a couple mm -hmm. of games and like, you know, get a different perspective on stuff or I played like a guard a couple like I'm actually at this point playing guard pretty consistently because I think it's one of the more fun armies to play despite it work it look from afar that you just stand there and shoot your artillery but actually doing everything properly and uh, because you have so many points in artillery using the stuff that is fighting for the board efficiently it's actually quite quite a skill to have mm -hmm. yeah so i don't know i just experiment with different stuff and sometimes take a break from the serious list but uh, by doing that also thinking about what can i learn from that right sure yeah trying to apply it to your like main game um and uh sam's asked the second question although i think you've actually already covered that and uh, nevertheless when a faction is strong, it is often very easy to take the obvious powerful thing, i.e. Tan and Wraiths in most Necron builds currently. How do you dig deeper and try find those niche units that aren't immediately powerful? Mm. Anything to add? Yeah, so you just... I it's just like if I have a little bit of time, because I don't know, I'm using the toilet, I'm just like scrolling the codex <laughs> and mm -hmm. looking for a weird stuff that I can find and what like what the unit can actually do looking at the whole meta. You need to actually be quite deep into the meta and understand the game quite a lot to know which unit will do what in what pairing, right? But like there are some obvious picks. Like if for some reason Thousand Suns and Grey Knights would be smashing the tournaments, it's very easy in Necrons to just look at, oh, there's that guy like uh, Canoptic Sentinel, which gives me 
four up uh, Finlow Pain Aura against Psychic Weapons, and he's also like very decent profile against gaining Space Marines and surviving damage from Space Marines uh, ish, mm -hmm. the Grey Knights and uh, Thousand Sons, actually. So, you know, having like a pick there, or um, I don't know, like it just comes to me naturally at this point, but I think what it comes down is just don't stop going through the ideas in the codex like always just re like read the whole codex from start to end again and think about doing that like it's, it's just that <laughs> like i think duda also like the team poland last year captain and like long time member of team poland team he also like very often mentions that he's just scrolling the eldari Codex for hours and hours when he have like a little bit of free time, you know, like doing something that mm -hmm. don't require you to use your hands and you know, we we know what we're talking about. Yeah, you just scroll yeah. the you scroll the codex and like find to try to find something new and like he ha found the fugan right. Like before mm -hmm. he played him on WTC, I didn't see a single list with that with him. Maybe there is someone that was like sold on him and played him before, but I didn't see this guy, so I'm sorry if there is someone listening and he was he's the inventor of Fugan in uh Aldari list. Not do that. Uh but from my perspective, he was the guy that bring it bring this uh, data sheet up and it's like on the paper looking away from it. Like he's not leading a unit, but he like supposed to lead a unit. He's not a lone op, but like you have like one model that is toughness three or four, that you, you have a very similar unit in a Autark that have a lone op and he can die. But if you think about like all the implications of him having uh, going going back to the game at the end of the phase. Uh, him dying, giving you uh, ability to, like back in the day, uh, giving ability to teleport, incarn, and <clears throat> how it's called, and uh, how much damage he actually do deals between the grenades and his gun, and like giving the miracle dice. Oh no, it's not miracle, it's the fate dice right. on yeah. him. Yeah. How much options he gives you. It's you, you just at some like if you go through the codex so many times at some point you're gonna find something basically. Mm -hmm. okay. Like for example, for example, I think it's very underrated data sheet that I was thinking is the worst data sheet in the Necron's codex that trans in the infinite. Mm -hmm. I think if you add him to like a five man unit of Lich Guard in Hypercrypt, giving you ability to have sticky objectives can be kind of cool for how much he costs and the unit of Lich Guard. Like you have like semi decently durable unit that will make objectives sticky and you can pick him up, drop somewhere else, mm -hmm. pick him up, drop somewhere else, or just run him across to other objectives. Like hmm, can be quite cool. Might not be optimal choice at this point, but if for any reason there's gonna be a build that uh, is very good at killing stuff on objectives. So, for example, uh, Codex Tech Thousand Suns come out and they can do 20 Doom Bolts, but they cannot move. You <laughs> need something that's gonna uh, still hold your objectives, but will not need to survive on the objective to do it. <laughs> so, yep. That might be a good thing to have, like sticky objectives on this unit. Right? I don't know. It's just Definitely. a matter. It's just a matter of understanding meta and going through the data sheets over and over again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for answering those questions, Gita, and uh, thank you for running us through this Necron Masterclass, uh, both parts one and part two. Uh, Guys, as always, well, if you're watching this, you probably have at least considered becoming a patron, or if you're watching this a little bit down the road, 
um, when it's become public, then please do consider becoming either a patron or a YouTube member. Um, please remember also to follow us on all our, our social media outlets and make sure to tune in to next episodes. But for now, uh, we are leaving this space. Thank you very much, Gito. Thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure to be here. It was, as always, a pleasure to have you on and uh, listen to you talk passionately about the Supreme Metal Overlords. For now, it's bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.